Now, a forensic audit on the allegations of corruption and embezzlement made by the United Nations about Somalia's central bank has concluded that the allegations were deeply flawed and unreliable. Forensic accountants from the American consulting firm FTI Consulting and a legal team from another U.S. firm found that the methodology and conclusions in the report did not necessarily support the allegations made in the report. Now, Annex 5.2 of the comprehensive United Nations Monitoring Group reports alleged that payments to private individuals constitute the bulk of withdrawals from the central bank, while 80% of withdrawals from the Central Bank of Somalia are made for private purposes and not for running the government. We also examined the allegation that the central bank is a slush fund for corruption. That's a statement that appears repeatedly in the UN Monitoring Group report. And they say that 72% of all transactions that have gone through the central bank during the uh, administration of President Hassan Sheikh Mohammoud have gone out of the bank to private people for non-governmental or corrupt purposes. We investigated that allegation very closely and found it to be completely incorrect. The monitoring group never attempted to contact relevant bank officials or obtain records from the bank or finance ministry. Neither did the monitoring group attempt to interview Somalia's accountant general who is responsible for managing the accounts of the state and its ministries. Well, just how beneficial has the BRICS partnership been for Africa? Well, that was one of the questions raised when leaders from BRICS member countries met on the sidelines of the recently concluded G20 summit. Many experts now say the BRICS grouping is not working for the African continent, even as analysts begin to question its future. CCTV Sumitra Naidu takes a closer look. When South Africa joined the BRIC grouping in 2011, the move was hailed as a step forward for the entire African continent. The five nations committed to strengthen partnerships with Africa, but early signs indicate that Africa may be at risk of missing out from potential benefits. I don't think that the, the, the frameworks that are there, like the AU, like BRICS and other things, are fundamentally interested in the majority of the people, unfortunately. I think they serve the interests of the powerful. But some business leaders are optimistic about the partnership. The BRICS grouping accounts for 16.8% of global trade, which amounts to $6.1 billion. To increase the trade between African continents, they need to communicate. Communicate by railroad, by roads, and by even by airplanes, but especially by roads. We can't do business, I'm from Congo, and we can't do business with uh, um, a country like Cameroon without the roads taking us to Cameroon. South Africa's own trade with other BRIC nations was $2.6 billion in 2011. But South Africa is the most developed country in Africa, making it competitive with the BRIC countries. Infrastructure is improving within the continent, but it is still a long way off from making a significant contribution to trade growth. The training differences among the, the African countries, uh, the levels of trainings are not the same. We need to, to uniformize the training. And another trade barrier is uh, the visas. We know it is not so easy, but we think it is important for the, 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 the high commissioners to, to, to ease visas for businessmen. Barriers to trade that already exist among African countries are further hampering trade with the rest of the world. Many South African businesses that are trading on the continent say that these barriers hamper the pace of development and for Africa to progress, such challenges need to be addressed urgently. Africa, though, is slowly overcoming its own challenges. By 2015, a free trade area is expected to be established, combining 26 countries in eastern and southern Africa into one single market that could be worth around $2.6 trillion. Sumit Ranadu, CCTV, Johannesburg. Well, let's now take a quick look at how the markets performed in early morning trade across the continent. The Nigerian oil share shedding 0.20%. The Johannesburg Stock Exchange was down 0.12%. The Nairobi Securities Exchange 20 share index was up 0.67% in early morning trade, while Egypt's EGX opened flat. 
We will now take another short break here, but the sports news is coming up next, including...